What's up everybody, my name's Andy and welcome back to Kit Guru. So today we're checking out a pre-built system by PC Specialist called the Fusion Spark. And this is coming in at just 999 pounds. But there is a reason we're checking out this system today. As you will know, getting hold of the latest graphics cards is almost impossible or they are very expensive. As such, the guys over at PC Specialist have created the Fusion Spark system designed to offer an easy upgrade path in the future. This means it comes with an okay graphics card for now, but it is intended to be swapped out when the user can get a hold of one of the latest cards. That way you can still be using the system instead of building a PC and not having a graphics card at all. In today's video, we'll be running tests on the system as is and then swapping out the graphics card for something more powerful to show you how well the system will run when you do inevitably manage to upgrade the GPU. So don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button as it really does support us here for free. In an ideal situation, many people will be wanting to build systems themselves. However, due to the shortages, many builders, including myself, have resorted to buying pre-built for the first time. Some of my friends even went as far as buying a pre-built just to get the graphics card from inside it as that was the only part they were missing. PC Specialist's direction with the Fusion Spark is the other way around, giving you a full system ready to upgrade when you can source a new card. So I'm going to start the review just like any other system review, reviewing the system as it arrives at the £999 asking price. Once we get into the testing phase, I'll save the GPU tests until last, as then we will compare the results of the included graphics card and a more modern one. This should then give you a good idea of how well the system will perform once upgraded as intended. Okay, so let's crack on and check out the specs that you'll be receiving for just under £1,000. You get an Asus Tough gaming B560 plus Wi-Fi motherboard, an Intel Core i5-11400F 6-core processor, 4GB AMD Radeon RX 5500 XT GPU, 16GB Corsair Vengeance DDR4 3200MHz which is 2 times 8 gigabyte sticks, of RAM, 512GB PC Specialist branded PCIe M.2 SSD, 1TB Seagate Barracuda 7200RPM HDD, Corsair 750W TXM semi-modular 80 plus gold power supply, and a PC Specialist Frost Flow 100RGB V3 CPU cooler, 3 PC Specialist ARGB LED fans plus controller kit, Windows 10 Home 64-bit, all housed in a PC Specialist Prism X RGB mid-tower case. For just £999, the specs of this system are actually looking pretty good for gaming, at least on paper for the price point. Remember though that that RX 5500 XT GPU is just there as a placeholder until you can source or afford to upgrade it. We'll be putting everything through its paces when we start our tests later on. So the PC Specialist Prism X Mid-Tower is pretty nice. The front panel might not be to everyone's taste, but I actually quite like it with that large opening with the grill that shows one of the three intake fans. The only negative really is there's no dust filter on the front, but there is underneath on the system and on the top. We have a large, slightly tinted glass side panel to see into the system. Inside, there's a nice amount of room to access the top of the motherboard and also plenty of room to route your new cables if you wanted to install more SATA drives. There's also a cutout from the shroud at the bottom to see our Corsair PSU, which is orientated the right way to see the graphic rather than it being upside down. Everything inside the system has a nice black theme. Luckily, no ketchup and mustard cables either from our power supply. And our CPU cooler's radiator is a nice matte black too, keeping in theme with the build. The only splash of color, when the system is off at least, is from our Asus Tough motherboard, as it does have that classic tough yellow accenting, but personally, I quite like it. We do have RGB galore with the PCS fans installed. We have three RGB intake fans, two more exhausting at the top, and one exhausting on the back, and yet another on our CPU cooler, totaling seven RGB fans overall. Cable management has been done well too, but of course, as there is a bit more headroom above the motherboard, you can see more of the cables than if there was a radiator along the top, but this doesn't bother me personally, I like having that access. Turning the system around and taking a look at the back of the PC shows that PC Specialist has really made an effort to keep the system tidy. The cable tidying is great 
despite the semi-modular power supply. I also like that the lowest intake fan is unobstructed by any panels or cables so it can pass cool air over the hard drive and the PSU too. There's also a couple of mounting slots on the back for some SSDs if you wanted to use them in the future. Overall the build is actually very clean. It has been well cable managed and the placement of everything looked like it had been installed with care. I like how they thought about the theme with the black cables and the cable ties along with the matching CPU cooler and the same fans throughout. Now here's the moment you've all been waiting for, let's dive into some tests. So as mentioned, at the start at least, we'll go over the GPU test last. Let's start off with some CPU tests with our i5-11400F. So Cinebench R20 scored well with just under 4000 multi-core points and just over 500 single core points. Cinebench R23 almost reached 10200 in the multi-core test and 1400 on the single core test. Time taken to render our BMW CPU test within Blender 2.93 was 236.95 seconds. And PC Mark 10 shows you how well the system performs at a variety of tasks and where it excels, scoring well across the board here. As expected, our Corsair Vengeance 16 gigabytes of RAM at 3200 MHz performed well during our ADA 64 memory benchmarking test. The 512GB PC Specialist NVMe M.2 drive outperformed its rated speeds of 2000 megabytes per second read and 1100 write by achieving 2550 megabytes read and 1775 megabyte write in our crystal disk mark testing. However, this isn't the fastest NVMe drive out there, but at the same time, this system as a whole only cost £999, so the drive was one of the compromises that PC Specialist had to have made clearly. Sound wise, our system idled at 39 decibels whilst running Cinebench R23 only saw an increase of 7 decibels and whilst gaming it sat around 47. With our single fan CPU cooler and 6 chassis fans our CPU temps idled at 31 degrees whilst hitting 72 under an extensive Cinebench R23 run and gaming sat slightly lower at 66 degrees. Now we've reached the point you've all been waiting for and also the whole point of buying this specific system. I'm going to run each test with the included 4 gigabytes Radeon RX 5500 XT and then I'm going to uninstall the card using display driver uninstaller and swap it out for a gigabyte RX 6700 XT gaming OC with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM which Dominic has done a written review of over on our website kitguru.net. Then we're going to run all the same tests again and compare them to simulate the user's upgrade experience and what sort of improvements they may expect when swapping to a higher end card. I'll show the test results from both cards at the same time so it's easier to visualize the improvement. We'll start with synthetic tests using 3D Mark. During 3D Mark Firestrike, our system with the RX 5500 XT installed suffers overall and in the graphics test, but excels during the physics test. Swapping out to the RX 6700 XT card shows the physics stays roughly the same as we would expect, but there is a big performance boost overall in the graphics area and over double the RX 5500 XT scores. Stepping up to 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra, we can see the stock system struggled overall and during the graphics tests, but still excels during the physics tests. Swapping over to the RX 6700 XT shows a big gain in performance at almost triple the previous scores. Finally, during 3D Mark Time Spy, we get an average result with a decent CPU score, but once again, comparing to our RX 6700 XT, the results just speak for themselves, really. Now let's move on to some real world gaming examples examples. I tested both cards at both 1080p and 1440p with the highest presets available with any adaptive resolution scaling turned off and VSync off too. All games were installed on the 512GB NVMe SSD as well. Starting with Forza Horizon 4 you can see our RX 5500 XT fared pretty well staying above 60fps during 1080p and only just dipping below 60fps at 1440p with our 1% lows. Comparing against our RX 6700 XT. You can see the system really excels from the better card giving us much better FPS results in both resolutions with double the FPS. 
Division 2 gave our RX 5500 XT a run for its money, and you can see it struggling a lot during 1440p gaming, not even hitting 40 FPS and only just above 20 FPS in the 1% lows. As expected though, our upgraded system results with the RX 6700 XT are the exact opposite, and it doesn't find the Division 2 a challenge in comparison, making it much more playable in both resolutions. Resident Evil 2 performed very well at 1080p with a stock system and playable too at 1440p, but once again, with the new card installed, this bumps the system into another level and gives us great results at over 250 FPS at 1080p and 175 at 1440p. The classic test now is of course Shadow of the Tomb Raider, clearly beating the stock system into submission with 1440p results, but it doesn't fare too badly at 1080p, but still not really ideal. Our RX 6700 XT system upgrade sees a nice improvement in both resolutions, however, and reaching close to 140 FPS at 1080p and nearly 100 at 1440p, once again making this much more enjoyable to play. Finally, we tested Doom Eternal. However, frustratingly, the game does not let you apply settings that the card can't handle based on your GPU's VRAM, so we were forced to do both tests on both cards using the high preset at stock for the 1080p testing, but for 1440p tests we had to use the high setting with the texture pool size dropped down to medium. We almost hit 100 FPS at 1080p, but dropped right back down to 65 at 1440p. Swapping the cards around you can see just how much of a boost in performance we get from the system when the GPU is upgraded, with almost 275 FPS at 1080p and still well above 200 FPS at 1440p. Here's our power test results with the RX 5500 XT, our idle wattage is 77, whilst running Blender it jumped up to 260 watts and gaming reached a steady 240 watts. Swapping over to the RX 6700 XT, our idle wattage goes up to 96, Blender increases to 277 and finally whilst gaming we see a big jump up to 386 watts. Finally, let's look at GPU temps. So our temps for the RX 5500 XT idled at 48. It reached 60 during 3D Mark tests and 66 during gaming. Our RX 6700 XT card saw an idle temp of 40, 55 whilst gaming. It reached 60 during 3D Mark tests. So in conclusion, the system overall performed very well during our standard CPU tests and other benchmarking. My experience with the system overall has actually been very positive. I liked the part choices, the aesthetics, and it's been cable managed well. Gaming wise, the stock system actually fared pretty well and it's certainly capable of gaming at 1080p, especially if you're willing to sacrifice some game settings to get even better FPS. This system is however intended to be upgraded and this is exactly where you will see the system shine. The performance boosts from our tests with the RX 6700 XT see that this is actually a viable option for those that can't source a high-end GPU currently and shows that this system really does benefit from the upgraded GPU, giving great real world results as seen from our FPS tests. The only true negative I can see with getting a system like this is that you will have to upgrade the GPU yourself, and this could be daunting for those new to PC gaming, but on the other hand, luckily swapping out the graphics card is the easiest upgrade you can do with a PC. Another thing to mention is that a second GPU 8 pin cable was easily accessible, a split a cable was used and it was zip tied backwards. All I had to do was snip it and then I could use the six pin portion of that cable to power the RX 6700 XT that we swapped in. If you prefer to use two separate eight pin cables then you do get spares in the box to use with our semi modular power supply but you will have to install these yourself. So at just under £1,000, I think this is a great system to consider if you're in the market for a new system without paying an arm and a leg for a current graphics card. Saving the money by buying a system like this as an upgrade path means that you can start saving for when those cards eventually become available at reasonable prices, while still being able to use the system and enjoy it for even gaming. So what do you guys think? Let us know about your PC concerns and what you're thinking of doing. Will you be building one yourself or buying an upgrade path system like this one? If you've liked this video, smash that like and subscribe. Check out our merchandise down below. I'm Andy, this is Kit Guru. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.